Hi, I'm Jessica Ma. I'm the founder and CEO of Indonero. My story starts a little over a year ago. I was studying computer science at UC Berkeley, and I built a prototype. I had some users, and I was trying to pitch angel investors to get them to invest in my company. And none of them were interested at all. This was for a business called Indonero. Our idea is that we wanted to help every entrepreneur better manage their money online. The problem was we weren't making much money. Actually, we weren't making any money. And this was pretty ironic for the time, because if you might have noticed by now, our company name is In Money. One person once mentioned, how is it that Indonero is helping other entrepreneurs better manage their money if Indonero itself isn't making any money? So I felt really helpless at the time. I thought, who is the online expert on making money? And to this day, I think that person is Dave McClure. I absolutely love the content he puts on his blog. He keeps a blog at 500 hats. And I once stumbled across one of his presentations called Startup Metrics for Pirates, where he basically says most people spend way too much time on building features that nobody uses or on user acquisition. But really, you should focus on converting your raw signups into being people who actually pay you money. So I thought marketing might not be the problem to Indonero's revenue woes. All of the angel investors we pitched said, you guys got to focus on user acquisition. Get more users, get more users, and you might make money, and then we might invest in you. But I thought, even if we had millions upon millions of dollars to spend on awesome Super Bowl advertisements, would we actually make any money? And the answer was, probably not. We started keeping track of our funnel. So we knew every person who came to our website, how likely they were to pay. And in our earliest days, not many people were willing to pay. So my co-founder and I thought, what is going on? Why aren't our signups converting into paying customers? And we found out that nobody was coming back to our site. This, again, is over a year ago. And not only weren't they coming back to the site, but we were trying to figure out, like, do they need more features? Were we just not building the right product or what? But they weren't even having a good first time experience. They weren't adding their banks or credit cards to Indonero. And even if th they did, they weren't having a great outcome. So someone told us, Indonero without face financial accounts is basically as useless as Facebook is without friends. If you sign up for Facebook, but you don't add any friends upon sign up, you're probably not going to come back ever again. And so I thought Dave was right. Pouring money into marketing during our early prototype stage wasn't the right thing to do. And I felt a little misled by these angel investors who were telling us to focus on user acquisition, because in hindsight, that wasn't the right thing for us to focus on at all. Metrics tell an inconvenient truth. Who here works over 70 hours a week? Great, you are fantastic entrepreneurs. Andy and I loved bragging about how we were working 70 hours a week, how we were eating ramen to save money and sleeping under our desk because we didn't want to leave our office. And quite frankly, we loved to flaunt how poor and hardworking we were. And the problem with that is that running a startup isn't like high school. You don't get an A just for trying to build a great startup. And I started thinking, knowing what I know today, if I could go back in time, could I spend half the amount of effort and still bring Indonero to where it is today? And the answer is yes. With metrics, we've been keeping track of all of our feature usage long before we actually build the feature itself. So we know when to stop wasting our time on things that aren't actually contributing to our bottom line. So work smarter and not harder. And that's what metrics do for us at Indonero. Another metric I've recently recently been keeping track of is how much money have we been leaving on the table? This is how much money is sitting right in front of us from our existing users who we haven't been able to monetize on. And that answer is over five and a half million dollars. I would be five and a half million dollars richer in 2010 if I had focused more of my time and effort on making money from my existing users. But instead, I went out to forge business partnerships and get press and pitch angel investors and talk at conferences and stuff that doesn't really contribute to making money. 
So you're going to work two, two times smarter, and you're not going to shoot yourself in the foot when you're not making the money you really think you should be making, which is why I think everyone here should know how much money they're leaving on the table. So then let's say you've done everything I've talked about so far. You, um, you know your funnel. You keep track of the metrics for all the features you build long before you actually build those features. Back in the fall, we were getting a lot of press coverage. And I wanted to know, who should I send my feature news to? If I have a feature on Indonero, or a new, I launch a new feature, who should I tell about this new feature? So we got some awesome press from small business publications. CNN Money wrote, Indonero is this nazi visual interface that helps hammer home the meaning of the numbers. And I thought there must be some correlation between the topic people write about us and how effective it actually is. So instead of just keeping track of the raw visits we get from Google Analytics, which everyone does, what really matters is how well do those new users convert. So for CNN Money, it was great. Two weeks later, New York Times wrote an awesome post about us. We saw a similar result. But after that, I started getting a bunch of inquiries from people wanting to write about the dearth of women in tech and about teens in entrepreneurship. And that really, um, I didn't think that'd help us at all. I thought it was nothing more than an ego boost. So we actually got a few articles. Jessica Moss, a teenage prodigy, female entrepreneur, and I absolutely hated that. But now I have the numbers to prove that those articles are absolutely useless. <laughs> all of us here think about getting business partners, and our angel investors bug us about this all the time. I love them very much, but they bug us about this anyway. And we started playing around with partnerships. We thought, let's try to get one big business partner and track how well this business partner actually helps us in making more money. And we got a lot of user growth after our most recent um, big business partnership. But looking at Indonero's Indonero, I saw that our revenue growth was absolutely flat for that, that one business partner. So I started tracking. I built some metrics features myself over a weekend to track every single business partnership relationship I've ever had. And I found that we had a smaller partner who didn't send us nearly as much traffic, but per user they sent us, we were making a lot more money. So this goes against the common grain of thinking about getting the biggest business partners you possibly can. when. Really, it might make more sense to focus on the smaller guys who are going to spend more time to get you higher quality traffic. So to close, where does this leave Indonero? Our funnel is way better than we were when we first started, and a lot of that is just from keeping track. If A represents before and B today, this is our funnel a long time ago. Very few people were paying us money. And this is us today. And this is from without doing any, uh, putting in any time and effort into user acquisition or partnerships or building new features. We've just focused on fixing that funnel. Of course, all these articles are a waste of time. I don't spend any time talking about being a young entrepreneur anymore. The man who inspired this, Dave McClure, he's now one of our investors. But what I'm most proud about is that Indonero is now exactly what our name says. We're in money. And I've never felt more, more proud about helping other entrepreneurs make money now that we ourselves are actually making some money. So to close, I want all of you to think about how much money are you leaving on the table? Again, that's how much money is sitting right in front of you that you could possibly be making if you're focusing on making money from the existing users you already have instead of on trying to find new users on the outside world. Thanks, and continue working 70-hour weeks, and I hope you have a great time at Web 2.0 Expo.